Welcome little explorers to another one of our videos about our amazing wee critters. Today I'm going to introduce you to two of our very special animals that we have in our wee critters family. We're going to focus today on a few unusual animals and animals in danger around the world because animals around the world are in trouble for lots of different reasons. The first wee critter that I'm going to introduce you to today is called Charlotte and this is Charlotte. Charlotte is a type of animal called a Chile Rose Tarantula. She comes from the South American country of Chile and rose because she's got pink rosy hairs to the back of her head. Now being a tarantula she's just a big hairy spider but She's not the biggest type of spider in the world. The biggest type of spider in the world is a Goliath bird-eaten spider. Their body would be as big as my fist and legs could be as big as your dinner plate. So really, really big. Now being a spider, these guys are invertebrates and they are what belong to a family called arachnids. So they're not insects, they don't have six legs. They have got eight legs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four on each side. And then they have these two smaller things at the front of their head that look like legs, but they're actually called pita palps. Now spiders, as well as having eight legs, have eight eyes and they're just based at the top of their head here and they can actually see right around keeping an eye out for predators and prey. Now being a tarantula lots of people think these guys make giant big webs because they're big spiders but they don't they're too heavy they would break those webs. What they do is they live down a little burrow and they put a little bit of web outside that burrow. We'll sit in that burrow and wait for the tiny little vibrations and wait until their prey hits that web. And once they hit their web, what they'll do, they'll jump onto their prey. They will grab hold of it with their pita palps and they will wrap it with silk. They produce this silk web from the spinnerets here in their bottom and they will wrap that around their prey to catch and hold it. Then they will inject it with venom. They've got two large fangs here at the front of their face and they will inject their prey with venom. That venom breaks down the inside of the insect and turns it a bit like a milkshake inside. So they will then suck the inside, that liquid form of the insect back up in through their fangs and that's how they eat their prey. Now, lots of people think spiders protect themselves, or tarantulas, sorry, protect themselves with their large fangs. They actually protect themselves with these lovely hairs all over their body. You can see Charlotte here has got a very hairy bottom. And when she gets scared, she will actually flick those tiny little hairs up into the air. The hairs are so small that they can go into your skin and even your eyes. So if a predator was trying to eat these guys, they'll get those little uh, bottom hairs in their eyes and stuff and make them really itchy and sore. And that gives her a chance to run away and protect herself. Now, interestingly, with tarantulas, the females live a lot longer than the males. They can live for about 20 years, whereas the males only live for about eight years. They don't live as long as the girls. Every single female spider can have hundreds, lay hundreds of eggs every year, and they lay those eggs together and wrap them in silk in a little egg sack. And the spiders will actually protect that egg sack until the babies hatch, which is really interesting for invertebrates because not lots of creep, not all creepy crawlies will actually protect their eggs and look after them until they hatch. Lots of people are scared of spiders around the world. And if you're scared of spiders, you have arachnophobia. Now in our wee country, we don't have spiders as big as this. We do get large garden spiders or large house spiders, which you'll see, especially this time of year, running around your houses. But they're coming in to your houses because it's warmer and too cold for them outside. Now, these guys make webs. And if you've ever looked closely at a web, they are made out of lots of individual strands holding that web together. If you break one or two of those strands, the web could break completely. And for us, the world 
and the ecosystems in the world are just like that web. If you break or remove a species from an ecosystem and damage it, even if it's a creepy crawly or something bigger like an elephant or a giant panda, if you take it away from the world, you will have a big impact on the rest of the web and it will not do its job. And that's why it's so important to remember that every single animal in the world, little explorers, has a place uh, in the world. And if we take out one of those species or remove it or damage it in any kind of way, we can have a big impact on the world. So our next wee critter, Little Explorers, is called Milo. And Milo is one of our two meerkat brothers. Now, meerkats are quite a common species that come from the wild, the deserts of Africa. And they live in large groups of up to 20, uh, 20 to 50 animals, usually consisting of a male and female and all their babies. Now you can see Milo here is looking around quite a lot. He's using his head to move from side to side, seeing if there's any predators. In the wild, when the group goes out to forage for food in the mornings, they will always be one of these meerkats high up on the sentry duty. That means they'll be up in a branch on top of a termite mound. They'll be looking for any coming predators like lions or eagles or owls or anything like that. And if they see a predator or something like that, they'll give a little alarm call to warn the rest of their family so they can run down the nearest bolt hole. These guys have a lovely set of claws in the front of the feet, which they use for digging in the ground, for finding their insect food. Now these guys love to eat insects and bugs, but they'll also eat snakes and lizards, birds and birds eggs, small mammals. And believe it or not, these guys love eating scorpions as well. They'll actually hunt the scorpions. And if they get stung by that venom, uh, venomous scorpion, they won't actually get sick like we would if we got stung by scorpions. So they have actually adapted to be able to uh, keep themselves safe from scor scorpion um, stings. Lots of people think they're so cool because they've seen them in TV adverts on The Lion King, who Timon is a meerkat, that they'll make great pets. But these guys promise you do not make good pets. They need company of their own. They need large enclosures um, to make sure that they're kept active and can forage and find their food. They can be very smelly and they can be a little bit nippy. Unfortunately, Mork and Milo's uh, mother was someone's pet and they, she gave birth to the babies and didn't know how to rear them. So I reared her, him and his brother since they're little babies. So they're friendly with me, but not so friendly for anybody else. Because of um, lockdowns and stuff like that, we are not able to bring them out very much. Okay, to meet you in your classroom or your group or your birthday parties at the moment. Um, so you can see when we're quieter setting like today, uh, Mork is a lot happier, although he still wants to go back and um, play with his brother in, in his little travel uh, box. So today we have met uh, a tarantula and a meerkat. So an animal that lots of people are scared of to an animal that lots of people think are cute. But just like I mentioned, every single animal in the world is important, whether it's a spider, a meerkat, an oil, an armadillo, an elephant, a whale, or even us. We all have an important part to play in the world. And as I mentioned before in our other videos, we can all make a difference no matter what age we are. So guys, next time you're out in an outdoor space, looking, uh, or walking with your family or taking a dog for a walk, look around, look at the trees, look for the animals around, whether they're birds in the trees in the sky, squirrels running on the ground, frogs, in the ponds and streams, we have to, or insects and bugs underneath the leaves on the ground. It's so important to remember every single animal. So today's book is called Why the Animals Came to Town by Michael Foreman. I was woken by the strangest sound, quiet at first but getting louder, the tramp 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 of marching feet, louder and louder down our street. I peeped round the curtains and in the evening light saw, saw coming round the corner the most amazing sight. Every kind of animal from all around the world all coming down our street. From the north came polar bears and reindeer two by two. From way out west came grizzly bears and moose and caribou.
from the south came penguins and kangaroos with pandas from the east. Out of Africa came elephants and a herd of wildebeest. Anteaters, apes and antelope, armadillos and koalas, baboons and bison, beavers, bats, ostriches and meerkats, hippos, rhinos, chimpanzees, monkeys, moose and wallabies, leopards, lizards, lions and llamas all coming down our street. Around the world the animals came and danced and pranced all down our street. And as they danced they sang the song, wakey wakey everyone, you've been asleep for far too long, our world is burning, melting, sinking, everywhere there's rubbish stinking. There are dusty deserts where nothing grows and rising seas and melting snows. Smoke fills the sky and hides the sun. We think it's time something was done. Then an elephant scooped me from my room and in the cool light of the moon, the animals and I dance all night long under the starry sky. Around the town and through the park, dancing, dancing in the dark, by the river, in the square, wonderful animals everywhere. As the sun came up, they took me home and waved goodbye and then were gone. Our street was empty in the dawn. I saw them there, I really did. I really, really, really did. I hope you saw them too, and I hope you felt the same as me. How empty all the world would be without the animals roaming free. We can help to spread the word, it's time the animal's song was heard. Let's spread the message, you and me, that's why the animals came, you see. I hope you enjoyed that story, Little Explorers, and it's so important to realise that lots of animals around the world are in trouble. The world is warming up, the ice caps are melting, and animals like polar bears are in trouble, rainforests are disappearing, and animals on our back doorstep are in trouble as well. Like Akil and the Hedgehog, we met in one of our other videos, or some of the orals or amphibians we learned about around the world too. They're in a lot of trouble. So always remember that we can make a difference to try and save these wild animals, especially when you're out in, the next, in an outdoor space or in a park or in your garden. Appreciate the wildlife we've got and let's help protect it.